Hey guys, this is Nico and in this video today we're talking about how the recession or the economic crisis will affect your Facebook ads and I'm gonna start this presentation immediately and the topic for today why the recession will demolish your Facebook ads results. I know it's kind of like dramatic to say it but after you watch this video till the end you'll find out what I mean. So make sure you stick to the end because I'm going to share my point of view as a marketer. Uh, you can go on YouTube and watch a bunch of videos by experts on economy or experts on just history. And they're going to talk about um, recession and economic crisis. But this is going to be my point of view as a marketer. And I'm going to share how those events will affect your Facebook ads results. In this video, you're going to learn what does a recession looks like in reality. What can we learn from the dot-com bubble? Because um, all those like historical events are kind of like connected and there are a lot of similarities between those events. So that's why I decided to share some example from the dot-com bubble. Why the recession could have a negative effect on your business. I'm going to give you some examples. I'm going to give you my prediction on the future of Facebook ads during recession. I'm going to talk about what could you do to make your Facebook ads recession proof. And I'm going to give you my seven tips to make your ad account recession proof. And on top of that, I'm going to talk about why the recession or the economic crisis could affect your business positively. Because it's not only a bad thing, it could be a good thing if you know how to use it if you know how to use recession the proper way. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the big opportunity of having, of being a business owner during a recession and running Facebook ads during a recession. So what does a recession looks like in reality? A recession is a period of declining economic performance across an entire economy that lasts for several months. This is just the... Um, definition from economic sources and i think i took this from economy.com but that means people are losing jobs that means manufacturing is slowing down declining consumer spending that means people are spending less money that means there is decline in like real income for businesses so um if you have a business this means that People will be spending less money with you. Um, that means you're going to end up making a less money. And this is just the reality. And some of like the most recent recessions or the economic crisis we experienced recently was the dot-com bubble. It was also known as the internet bubble. And this is a period between 1995 and 2000 when investors pumped money into internet-based startups in the hopes that these companies would turn a profit. But this was very speculative. So this was very speculative. And the Nasdaq index, was, which is uh, a technology-centric index, rose from less than 1,000 in 1995 to a peak of 5,408 on March 10, 2000. And as you can see on the graph, I have the Nasdaq index and you can see it started like slowly, slowly rising and pretty much it peaked in 2000 and after the peak, it dropped by 80%. So a lot of things happened here and this was the crisis, the crisis. So there is also the collapse of the NASDAQ index in 2008 uh, or 9, I think. And as you can see, it collapsed by 50%. So... I can say that the Nasdaq index could be the indicator for the upcoming economic crisis. Again, I'm not a financial expert, but this is just my take. And so what happens like when economy crisis hits? Um, a lot of people are losing jobs, but people are losing jobs because their companies, in many cases, they're feeling for bankruptcy. And I took this statistic from Statista.com. And this is the annual number of businesses bankruptcy cases filled in the United States from 2000 to 2020. And as you can see, right after the 
economic crisis in 2000, a lot of companies filed for bankruptcy in 2000 and 2001 and 2002. There are almost roughly 35 to 40,000 field cases in the United States. And the same thing happened in the economic crisis in 2008 and 2009. And this number actually hit 60,000 um, bankruptcy cases. And as you can see, this number is declining from 2010, 2012. And right now it's pretty stable. It's like actually very, very low. But, but this data is by the 2020. I couldn't find data that is like up to 2022 because pretty much it was like a few years ago. So I couldn't find that data. But as I mentioned earlier, um, a good indicator for uh, uh, an upcoming economic crisis could be the Nasdaq index. Now let's see how the recession and like um, how like the recent years are affecting the stock market. And I'm gonna switch the screen and I'm gonna open my stock app. Uh, and this is Apple stocks. And I'm just gonna go to the Nasdaq index and I'm gonna take a look at the last 10 years. As you can see, like the Nasdaq index is just raising, rising, you know, but you know, on November, 2021, it peaked and there is a decline. So it's actually going down. Uh, could this be the recession? Could this be the economic crisis? I don't know, but we saw a similar behavior from the dot-com bubble and we saw the similar behavior from the 2009 economic crisis. So pretty much there is something happening. If the Nasdaq index is falling dramatically, uh, there is pretty much the possibility of this being a recession right now or this being uh, an economic crisis and the day I'm recording this video, this is the July 1st, 2022. So this is how the NASDAQ index looks like. And I'm gonna go back to my presentation right now. And I think even if I like open the Bitcoin, you, you're gonna see the same. The Bitcoin is dropping. If I open Ethereum, Ethereum is dropping. If I open the S&P 500, the S&P 500 is dropping since November um, 1st, you know, it peaked on January 3rd, but right now everything is kind of like going down and it feels like it's gonna go down even more. And when I, whenever I open my stock application and whenever I see everything red, that means the economy is slowing down. So, um, and pretty much if you think about like uh, people buying stuff, there is like a lot of hype. Uh, when we talk about NASDAQ or S&P or Ethereum or Bitcoin or whatever, there is just like a lot of hype and people are like, oh, you need to buy today or it's going to go up. So this kind of like affects the market. Uh, it's kind it's, it's very similar to what happened in the dot com bubble. Uh, and there was just like a bunch of investors who wanted to buy those companies. Um, and they believed that those companies would go uh, up in value. So the hype played a very, very bad effect on those investors. And this is why the dot com bubble bursted. But hype in marketing is a strategy of using extreme publicity. And in many cases, it's a bubble. And we had this bubble, like we, we're still in this bubble and you're going to see people are hyping like Bitcoin or they're hyping like some stocks and they'll be like, oh, you need to buy now because now, now it's the best time to buy. And whenever like everybody is talking about doing something, in many cases, you shouldn't do it. And this is what, what I believe in. I believe in like being a contra contrarian and doing the opposite of everybody else, you know, and there was this company called pets.com and pets.com was a company that was founded in 1999 and it was like a very good example that describes the dot-com bubble. So the company raised um, 82.5 million 
uh, in its February 2000 APO and the shares, the stock shares debuted at $11. And during the first financial year, Pets.com earned 6,620 k in revenue and spent almost 12 million on advertising. So extremely, extremely unprofitable. And the problem was pet supplies of all types, food, toys, clothing, and so could be found easily at the nearest grocery or pet store. And there was like a lot of hype around pets.com and just people were buying pets.com stocks because they believed that would be like the next big company and they would make a lot of money. But the problem, but they had like a problem with like, with their business models. So the products they had, people can buy them anywhere and they were not uh, priced very well. So pets needed to lay, lay it off 255 of their 320 employees and those people lost their jobs and the stock had fallen from its IPO price of 11 per share in February 20, uh, in February 2002, almost nine, 19 cents at the day of its liquidation announcement. And this happened in a very, very short period of time. This happened in a matter of like, I don't know, maybe less than two short years. So this company was like, it seemed like a very, very promising company, but it, it just went down the drain. Does this sound like similar to NFTs maybe? Does this sound similar to Bitcoin or crypto? Well, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure that right now there are like many companies like this. There are many like business opportunities like this. And we're going to see what's going to happen um, with these businesses and with these great opportunities in the very near future. And to, to raise the money, to raise uh, almost like 83 million pets used hype marketing, but didn't have a viable business model, you know. So this is just an example of how um, a company that is like... Um, very well let's say known and it's on the news and it's everywhere could like just go down the drain in just like matter of two short years and like imagine like having like 83 million on february and just going broke in like i don't know two years it's just like unimaginable you know it's just like very very hard um and here I just wanted to mention like hype marketing because a lot of Facebook advertisers right now are using hype marketing and they and they have like those loud ads uh, and people are just buying because there is so much hype. People are buying their products because people have money. People are spending like crazy. But when the economy crisis hits, people would stop spending money, you know. And this is how to make your Facebook ads account recession proof because once people stop spending money, you need to have a reliable business model. You need to go back on your product to market feed. You need to go back and figure out why people are buying your products, uh, why people are spending money with you. In my opinion, whenever you have like a difficult situation, you shouldn't be stopping your Facebook ads completely. You shouldn't cutting your marketing expenses because you're using Facebook ads to drive new, new customers. That's why you should focus on products and Facebook ads campaign campaigns that worked well in the past. You might need reconsidering. Uh, you, you might need to relaunch those campaigns and relaunch those products. And um, for some of you, you might pivot to, an, to a recession-proof angle. You could be like, hey, we know uh, there is a recession going on. That's why we want to make this offer to you. This is something you could use uh, and you could use the this angle to talk to your customers and talk to your clients, you know, because if there is a recession for you, probably there's going to be a recession for everybody. And during a recession, people won't spend a lot of money. So, for example, um, that means that um, people might uh, decrease the aver their average card value. 
if your average card value was like uh, $200, it might go to like $100. So uh, you need to be ready with your recession proof angles. You might need to build a recession proof campaign, you know, uh, when everybody is like uh, trying to like raise prices, you know, and just survive in the recession, you could just have a recession proof campaign and just launch it, you know. Um, but also, this is the good thing. Um, a lot of bankrupts, a lot of businesses will fail for bankruptcy and a lot of businesses will f uh, f file for bankrupts for bankruptcy. That means they will stop spending money on Facebook ads. That means you have a lower competition. That means the Facebook ad cost will decrease and Facebook ads will become cheaper. So it's not only bad things. This is also a good thing. A lot of your competitors might uh, go out of business if they don't have a reliable business model and if they're um, just relying on hype marketing, you know. So this is a very, very good opportunity. Think about your recession proof campaigns. Think about um, just surviving in business because the good, another good thing um, for you, if you run a business uh, during recession, recession time, uh, if you survive the recession, um, you'll just crush it on the long run. I gave you the example of pets.com and how pets.com didn't survive the recession and the economic crisis, but a company that survived the dot-com bubble is Amazon. So what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, you know? And this will be um, your just your challenge with having a recession. And yeah, I talked about the lower competition on Facebook ads. So for example, if you are getting a lead for like, uh, ten dollars you might get the same lead for like seven dollars you know and for example imagine somebody is like downloading your um, opt-in or your freebie or whatever and that person is um, at recession you know and that per person doesn't have money right now but that person um, will get another job when the economy picks up and that person will spend money with you on the future so on the long term, if you play your cards right, the recession might be a very, very good thing, but you need to follow those simple steps. And this was my presentation for today. Um, we talked about how to survive uh, the recession as a business owner and how to survive the recession um, if you're advertising on Facebook. And I also try to give you this angle and this message that the recession could be a good thing if you play your cards right. My name is Nico. In this channel, I help entrepreneurs uh, grow their businesses using Facebook ads, YouTube ads, and automated marketing systems. If you wanna scale your business in recession or even like in a good economy, make sure you check the links in the description below. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon. Bye now.